You know, the UDS was last weekend, and everyone was waiting on Ed Exception's list. And then Ed's list was posted, and no one talked about it. So, what is up guys, and for here, I wanted to do a rundown on Ed's list, and I wanted to talk about the Teledad deck that was on Team Samurai X1's channel previously this week. So, guys, please check out the original two deck profiles down below. Ed had a lot of interesting points to make about Musketeers, um, and how it was a pretty good meta call. Now, remember, the UDS is a massive round of Swiss. I, I don't remember what the exact count is, but it is long, and then Ed made it into top eight, which was pretty impressive, considering that it was, what, Zephra um, winning the event, and then uh, X Pendulum Magician. I'm pretty sure it was, I'm not going to say it was six Pendulum Magician, but the number was extraordinarily high, considering the event itself. And I mean, as we said, the TCG has been predominantly Pendulum Edition, Pendulum Edition, Pendulum Edition for the longest time. And to, to see Musketeers coming out of the woodwork as a rogue deck, I mean, it definitely proves the point that we've been talking about this format, that you can literally play anything, and as long as you're a capable pilot, we're, we're finally off of like the deck itself. We're now back into the category of pilot making a difference for the deck, as opposed to Pendulum Magician more or less being the deck itself with less pilot interaction. You're seeing these rogue meta choice picks being piloted by probably some of the best players that we've seen. So it's definitely a good chance in the format to get to see these masterminds behind the decks actually doing well. So Ed taking Magical Musketeers top eight at a major event. Like this is whew, this was some spicy shit. So anyway, into the deck profile. Triple Ash Blossom. Triple Ghost Ogre, Triple Caspar, Two Adok, uh, Triple Kid Brave, uh, Two Starfire, Triple Cross Domination, One Steady Hands, Triple Desires, Triple Duality, One Regeki, Triple Ties of the Brethren, and One Upstart Goblin. Now, he did put a lot of major emphasis on you wanting spell cards that were basically self-replacements. Uh, they tend to generate advantage with replacing themselves. I mean, Upstart Goblin would be the best card in this deck if it was at three. Being able to just net you a card and proc all of your abilities is definitely something that, looking at this particular build and style, uh, it definitely is something that you should definitely consider. Like, if you, if you want to change anything, just make sure that you're considering spell cards that can revolutionize the way that you're thinking. And then the traps, triple a Desperado, one Fiendish Deal, triple Last Stand, and two Solemn Scolding. Two Solemn Scolding was actually very clutch for him. Again, remember, everything can be played from your hand. So if you are setting Scoldings and having full negates um, off of an established board, oh, so much value. Um, one of the other cool things to take note of um, in this particular deck, um, he was talking about how Steady Hands wasn't all that good. It, literally, you're just kind of using it turn one to proc and kind of do your thing. And it's it doesn't seem all that particularly well with like the theme, eh, the way that the theme of the deck is supposed to work. Um, but overall, um, he definitely said sticking to one was fine. Uh, the extra deck, one double helix man, one Ningrisu, one Electromite, triple, or excuse me, one Phantom Quartz, one Firewall, one totally awesome. One Break Sword, one Grand Pulse, one Nightmare Shark, one Acid Golem, one Dante, one M7, one Hiatus, one Trishula, and one ABC Dragon Buster. Uh, he definitely talks about uh, how Hiatus is a massive retrieval engine in the deck. You know, being able to go into M7 for literally free um, to create a very beautiful scenario for you to start recurring monsters back. Um, he was talking about how there are ways to get multiple bounces, um, give brave loops, um, and shit like that. And I, excuse me, I dock loops. I definitely, I like what dock brings to the table in this deck. Um, a little bit more than I actually thought, um, but recursion is definitely probably one of the most amazing things that you could have in this deck. In this side deck, triple Winter Cherries, triple Dimensional Barrier, triple Evenly Matched, triple Imperial Iron Wall, one Dancing Needle, and two Rivalry. I would have loved to have definitely seen three Rivalry and Ed's side deck, to be completely honest with you, but 
it, it all seems like it kind of worked out for Ed. You know, I'm I'm a super big fan. After hearing Imran's logic on cherries and things like that, a deck like this that doesn't particularly rely on its extra deck all that much, you have full ability to take advantage of everything without signing in cards into the extra deck that would kind of affect your strategy and give your opponent knowledge because they're like, well, are you signing into the extra deck? And when they see you grab it, it's not giving your opponent as much information as you can definitely puts you in a much better position and the strategies and stuff Ed talked about in the video I'm definitely shocked that more people haven't really tried this deck or similar things but Ed Ed's a crafty little man I, I've definitely I've seen a lot of cool things from him I definitely hope that we will continue to see a lot of cool things from Ed in the future because this is the style of Yu-Gi-Oh that I really enjoy covering and it definitely shows that there is hope for the game uh, pre-needle fiber and things like that. So let's dig into the next list, shall we? The next list is the... Who, a Teledad deck that finished X2 at, what was it, the Ottawa Canada Regional? Now, for those of you that don't know, Teledad was an original concept back in late 2009, or late 2008 into early 2009. It was a deck that basically relied on the Destiny Hero engine with Emergency Teleport to basically capitalize on making level 8 monsters while loading up Darks in your graveyard for you to drop Dark Arm Dragon on your opponent. Um, this is just a little tidbit for you new players out there that are like, oh, well, you know, Dark Arm Dragon doesn't seem that broken. Yes, it does. In multiple copies, um, with a Stardust backing it up, things like that, with a much smaller card pool available to you, yeah. This man was incredibly crazy. Uh, this particular build doesn't really focus on Stardust. It has things like BLs and Double Omega, which you can argue are a little bit better. And this deck also has a spin on a Mass Hero engine as well for disrupting your opponent, which is actually kind of cool. So let's dig into this, shall we? Two Armageddon Knight, one Dark Arm Dragon, triple Dark Greffer, one Diamond Dude, Triple Malicious, Triple Shadow Mist, Triple Ghost Ogre, one Crabons, and two Plague Spider. First thing you gotta know over here, no Ash Blossoms. Budget players rejoice. You you could have a particularly fun chance here at a cheap experience. In the spells over here we have Triple a Hero Lives, Triple Lord Darkness, only two Destiny Draw, two, one Emergency Teleport, one Foolish Braille, Triple Mass Change, one Reinforcement of the Army, one Soul Charge, and two Twin Twister. Interesting to note, I think he's putting more emphasis on the Allure of Darkness Turbo Him than the Destiny Draw. Um, I don't think there would have been a lot of scenarios that come up that he would be forced to want to remove Malicious, but if it came up, I'm sure he didn't really care. And then Traps, one Judgment, two Strike, one Warning. And then the extra deck down here, one Isolde, Day, one Decode, one Borload, one Utopia Lightning, one Utopia. One Void Ogre, one Scarlight, two Omega, one Coral Dragon, one Beelzebub, two Dark Law, and one Anki. Side deck, a nice little kaiju package of Doggeron, Gamma Steel, and Kumamungi. Abyss Dweller, one Dark Hole, one Interrupt Kaiju Slumber, one Raigeki, one Twin Twister, triple Anti Spell, and triple Dimensional Barrier, with one more open slot for you to kind of mess around with. Now, the strategy for Teladan. It, it's not much of a strange one, do you? Oh my god. <laughs> I already see a brick. QQ. His hands are actually really fucking good. Dark Gruffer. You can't... I, eh, I would probably... I would probably consider uh, doing Dark Gruffer, dumping the Malicious, and moving along with my day. Um, dropping a Plague Spreader, put the Crabons back on the top, and you can teleport. I mean, that seems subpar as a play in today's day and age, but I mean... You can establish an Omega or a BLs, depending on what you're playing against. And that seems like pretty good value to me. Um, ooh, hey, Shadow Mist, Itali. I mean, it sucks we opened up. Man, these two cards are like a curse to me. I see these every fucking time. So I didn't like Teledad. Oh, we got a Hero Lives and Malicious and Mesh Change. All right, we can do some cool stuff here. I'm going to suck and get that fresh Alloy Darkness. Hmm. I don't know, like I said, this is, this is the cool shit I like to see in the current format, you know, it, you get to mess around with a lot of things, and I don't know, it, it just it makes my heart warm to see these things in today's current day and age, but 
What do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Please check out both original duck profiles as well down there. And guys, I'm out. Do serenos. Have a good rest of your day. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Card Fight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.